Hello everybody, my name is Luigi Pengara and welcome to part 2 of this Skyrim Machinima How To This live stream, I'm going to be as verbose as I can and give you as much detail as I can so you can make some kick-ass machinima of your own Okay, let's talk about console commands Now what is console commands? Well, if I press the tilde key on the keyboard which is the squiggy line under escape I come up with this blank screen now this is the console from here we can input several commands which will aid us in our machinima making so <coughs> first of all as I talked about before uh, in my lighting 101 let's summon inverted commas some lighting let's summon a torch now to do this we've got to know the code and unlike in Fallout New Vegas Skyrim gives you a little cheat in order to find the codes of various objects in the world so we type in help H-E-L-P spacebar torch press enter and now we've got a bunch of things we've got action spell injure we have to scroll upwards to scroll upwards press page up on the keyboard and we're looking for light let's choose the top one so the summon command is simple but you have to spell it correctly <laughs> I got that mistake myself <coughs> so it's player dot place at me all in one word spacebar and now we just copy the code the word for word zero 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 one d four e c press enter and we can see already that we have summoned a torch and now we've got some more light for our character see it looks much much better if we go back to first person view mode we see the torch uh, we see, there it is there's a torch on the floor giving us some light now let's say we don't want one torch we want lots of torches to do this we go back to the console by pressing tilde and instead of typing play dot place at me whatever all over again we press the up arrow key and it automatically gives us the code that we entered just a moment ago okay uh, that's torch and we press enter and let's summon free torches so once again to reiterate player dot place at me the code of the torch and the number three please spell it correctly otherwise Skyrim cracks a shit press enter <laughs> and as we can hear and see if we get out of the console command we can see we have one, two, three torches. <laughs> Great. Now let's get rid of these torches. <coughs> and the other console command uh, to teach is free cam. So back, go back to console, type in TFC, press enter and if you use um, the controls to control your character what you find is you're now controlling the camera and with this you can create whole you can create close-ups wide shots you can get some cutaway shots uh, very useful um, if you want to go upwards press the left mouse button if you want to go downwards you press the right mouse button to create something like a worm's eye view so TFC very useful the next bunch of commands works in conjunction with TFC the first one I want to teach is Saxon so for example we're moving the camera towards and backwards from our character but it's a little too fast so to fix this we go into our console we type in S U C S M space point four 
enter, get out of the console, and now as we can find, if we back away slowly, TFC, the free cam mode, is now slow. The other important one is the field of view. So with the top, with free cam on, we can go towards her, and it it works as a close up, but it's still not the best. Now we can do, fix this by backing off a little bit, and we go into the console. And we type in FOV. Let's say thirty. Field of view. 30% press enter and now we zoomed in and this is how you get super close up shot shots let's try 8 there we go a nice shot and I think the de default is either 60 or 70 so FOV really handy for creating uh, close-up shots. I suppose one of the most important console commands is toggle menus. So we go into console command, uh, the console, and we type in TM, enter, and we press tilde again to exit out of it, because it seems like we're frozen. And you'll notice that the crosshair, the, the HUD, the health bars, everything is off. So, uh, even if I try to pause the game by pressing escape, I can hear the sound of the menu popping up, but it's not popping up. So TM, TM is really useful if you want to get rid of the crosshairs, if you want to make your machinima more filmic, more cinematic, I highly recommend using TM uh, to remove all the menus. Otherwise, you have to go manually into settings and drop the opacity, and it's it, it's just a whole different mess. So TM is a fast hand of doing that. The caveat of TM is that if you now want to go back into the console and change the field of view, you have to know what you're doing um, and tell the difference when the console is on or not, because you can't see what you're doing, and it's pretty hard to summon things if you can't see what you're doing. Okay, let's default this. And you press type in, simply type in TM, and everything's back to normal. Great. There is one caveat of TFC, of the free cam. Let's back about so I can show you. So right now we're in third person view mode. If we turn on TFC, the free cam, we can see our player character. And we can make um, some cool movies and some cool shots. However, if we're in first person view mode, and we turn on TFC, if we back out, what we find is that our player character is disappeared. Now this is useful for some things, for getting um, shots for for cutaways, but if you want to have a shot with your player character in frame, you must remember to go to third person view first, then turn on freak. Another handy hint in free cam mode is if you hold the shift key you move a little bit faster. Now let's summon an enemy, an NPC, and test out the targeted options. So, go back to our console, and let's search for Forsworn. So let's choose the first one, FF001. Zero E D spacebar one because this is an enemy NPC and not a named NPC we have to put the multiplier. For named NPCs you don't have to put the multiplier. You can but you know. So another thing to note with this method 
is that what I see as FF0010ED may not be the same for you. It changes every time um, you log into Skype. So press enter and hopefully if we back out we discover uh, you'll notice that uh, we summoned a force war member and you notice that when you summon things they be they appear behind the player character an important thing to note so he is about to attack us uh, it's a good uh, reason to teach you about god mode it's TGM toggle god mode god mode is enabled and this is important if you're filming big battle scenes because if you don't put god mode on before you film the battle scenes your play pa player character is going to be killed and then it's going to be a pain in the ass to reload it and then whatever so let's test if this god mode works exit out of the console and the force one he's attacking us and we're in god mode so it works so to stop him from attacking us we've got a number of options and they both have their own um, pros and cons what we can do is turn detection off so to do that is just simply T detect press enter and AI detection is off he's gonna swipe at us for a few more seconds and there he goes and he disappears and he's come back again so now we are invisible to the force war mo member and he's about to cook some he's about to sit down or cook something yeah he's about to sit down so t detect is useful if you want shots of usually aggressive characters like force war bandits bears wolves those sorts of creatures if you want a shot of them like still breathing still animating there is still he's still breathing but you don't want them to attack you but let's turn detection on again and here's notice me if we want if we want the, the character to notice us or the creature to notice us but we don't want him to attack to freeze him in place what we can do is toggle combat AI off so T C A I press enter all combat AI processing processing is now off so we exit out of 2d and we've got a shot of him reading his bow still looks like he's breathing but he's not attacking he's frozen in place and like I said they both do similar things but they're both useful in different ways so if you want to freeze him in the middle of a fighting stance TCAI if you want him to go about his business toggle detect off great okay there are other things we can do with an NPC it's a good way to teach you about targeted uh, console commands so we simply go into the console right and then we click on the force one comes up with its number right there and from here we can turn this combat processing off we can turn this T detect off or we can go type in kill enter and he dies and now we can move his body somewhere else around here and if we go back into the console command and it's got that number still so still the forsworn and nothing else 
we can type in resurrect and make sure you spell this correctly two hours press enter and he's alive again yay okay I'm gonna toggle combat processing off for him right now and there's a another cool console command what we can do if we go to third person view So I'm just going to click out, just to make the targeting console commands off for now. So we click on the force one member, and what we can type in is move to spacebar player. Press enter, and now it's right next to us. A very simple way of moving NPCs close to you. The next one I'm going to teach you is how to get rid of objects. So, say if you've got an object uh, in the background and you want it removed. Well, simply go into the console, click on the objects, we see the code for it, and type in disable. Press enter, and now the offending object is gone. And if you made a mistake, we can simply, because we're still selected on that object, type in enable, get out of the console, and now it fades back in. So disable is really useful if you want to get rid of some background objects. There's a few more now that I want to teach. I want to teach uh, how to change the race of your character. So we go to console command and we've got to type in show race menu, all one word, press enter and, and Skyrim takes a while to breathe and now we must exit out of the console. And now we can change the race of our character. Not change the skills, just the race. Give her a different look. Let's make her an Argonian, just for shits and giggles. And let's, she'll do fine. Press OK. Give her a name. It could be anything, literally anything. And now we've created a new look for our character. And you'll notice that she has her hands bound. Now to fix this, simply get out, get out a weapon, unsheath it. And to fortune, and her hands are free. Great. Now, for this last command that I want to teach you, is how to take control of an NPC. So I've just summoned a bear, uh, just for just for the process of this tutorial. And what we can do is go up to the bear click on it, give us the code, and we simply press T, C, press enter, and now toggle controls driven, active movement is now controls driven. So if we get out of console command, what we find if we try to move our character, is the <laughs> we actually end up moving the bear. Now this is a little bit finicky. If we go to the third person view. And we've got to position the camera carefully. That our player character is, is off screen. Because you notice that when I move the bear, I'm moving my player character as well. She's going towards the, the pot and he's going towards uh, the barrel here. And let's turn it off. 
So if you need to reposition, if you want to animate, do a machinima with some of the creatures or a daedra or a dragon or something, that is how you do it. And let's get rid of him for good measure. Click on him, disable. A very loud bear. So that's basically it. Those are the most basic and useful console commands for Scrum to make a machinima. In part three, I'm going to talk about mods. Hope you join me for them. And if this tutorial has been useful to you, then share it with others on the social media because I want to help people. That's why I'm making this in the, third, in the first place. Um, I want to see your machinima. So share it and let's help each other out. Okay, thank you for watching.